Get me a cup of coffee. You no, know, my name's Ryan. We've, we've, we've been working together for weeks. Months, actually. Months now. Dan, you've been a terrible assistant that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm not an assistant, Betty. I don't, I mean, I play an assistant in the movie, and I'm an actor in real life, and you should, you should, you should know when that. When Betty White says she wants a cup of coffee, you get her a a cup of coffee. You ab-crunching jackass. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I just saw the most anticipated movie of the year, Deadpool. It was glorious. Once in a generation, a movie comes along that your whole family will love. If your family is a f***ed up group of kissing inbreds. Plus, Ryan Reynolds looks so f***ing handsome in his red leather suit. I give it four Golden Girls. I'm such a, I'm such a whore I can't say no to you. <laughs> Craig, you can get behind me anytime you want. Build arms like this. Whoa. Be are you okay, Betty? I'm, I'm getting better. Nice. I want to walk the earth and commit crime. You know I cook any. Yeah, you do. Pork chop sandwiches. Oh shit! Get the fuck out of here! What are you doing? Go! Get the fuck out of here, you stupid idiot! Fuck, we're all dead! Get the fuck out! My god, did that smell good. You detect it. There's it no going and you tell me do things. I done running. Wow. Nice. G.I. Joe! The number one Betty White tip for living a long and happy life. Don't waste your time watching this crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my Day 80, October 2nd. It's a Wednesday. Just another manic Wednesday. Howdy ho, what's crack a lacking? My funsters, it's the old cranky game. We're about to give you some razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. We still got one person in the police station that like us. Mm -hmm. One's man trash is another man's treasure. And maybe that's what every divorced wife says. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Like, wow, that's. That was a little harsh for a nice Thursday. Uh, tomorrow's Veterans Day, everybody in America. Um, uh, do a little something uh, for veterans. Volunteer whenever you can, uh, especially for disabled veterans. Uh, they're the reason that uh, if you want to go protest, uh, if you want to go to the movies, if you want to go uh, fart in public, <laughs> They're partly responsible for that, uh, for you to have the freedom to do so. And if you just want to stay at home and play video games with a nice PC, they're responsible for that too. Um, I was with the artillery uh, in the United States Army, so a uh, long time ago. All right, anyway, so analysts, most contraband passes through dockyard. Well, no crap. What an analyst. Hey, I analyzed this. Like what? How'd you analyze it? Well, I was up on the bridge, and I saw a lot of it. Beat Buster's Dance Studio organized performance near Corn Mountain. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. Part 2. Beauty contestant breaks leg. Well, don't tell him to break a leg. Alright. You guys all read... That last temptation of Neptune. It must be like Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, yes. 
Gardner, Gardner, Gardner. All right, we're going to start the day. It, whoa, whoa, whoa. It looks like we have more tapes. He did still a smile. He did dirt cheap. Why is there a turkey leg there for dirt cheap? I don't know. Chopin. I I can't get flagged for Chopin, can I? We're gonna play it out here. Oh, did I give somebody oh, police academy? <sighs> yeah, everyone's celebrating it, and you're a loser. City Hall. I need detectives. Help oh, and an officer, and I want to race. Thank you. Thank you. What's gonna happen? Shift B. We got a lot of guys on shift B. You know what that means? Someone's gonna die. Suicide threat. Freeburg High School. What else is going to come down the pipe? Oh, that's it. Okay. A middle school student locked herself in the chemistry teacher's office, loudly threatening to mix herself a lethal cocktail and drink it. The teachers are afraid to break down the door and report that the girl has shown unstable behavior in the past. According to one of the girl's classmates, I think someone broke her heart, but I don't know the details. Someone break your heart. We'll send Robins, our most sincere, and Donut, who is probably not. Okay. Donut, don't say anything creepy. He just looks like the guy that would say something creepy, doesn't he? Look at him. Look at him. Look at Donut. Uh, I think you're pretty hot. Ew. Like Grody to the max, which would be in the 80s. Gag me with like a spoon. Like a spoon. Robin, why did we, why did we arrest her? Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna help. That's gonna help. Uh oh, not the assignment. Jack, we have something going down today at pawn shop at 16:39. We are very pandemic about this time frame. Uh, we don't have it. Pulls of obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's gonna be 16:39. Not 1640, not 1638. Okay. We want any police crash in the party. I think 2000 should be enough. Alright, 1639, 16. Okay. I'm gonna forget. You know I'm gonna forget. Alright. Fraud. Touch a Dionysus liquor store. A cashier started flirting with a customer, asking her to show him her ID or he wouldn't sell her a bottle of wine. Oh, he then called the police insisting it must be a fake ID. She just couldn't be 35 years old. I, I'll give her 29 tops. What? All right. You moron. Go on, Hunter. Go and do a wreck. Theft. A saleswoman at a clothing store called to report a theft. A girl exited the dressing room wearing four t-shirts and made quickly for the exit. Scanned at the store entrance, sounded its alarm, but the thief managed to slip through and ran to the street. Now, I'm no expert, but I, I don't believe we ever had scanners back in the late 70s, early 80s. I could be wrong. Uh, Kazuma, that's your new partner. Her name is Betty White. Betty White! I don't care. Uh, Betty Olivia White, but her name is going to be Betty White. Look, she even's got the little mole. The Betty White mole. Elsa Pavlovina. Elsa, go there, uh, upset the election. 1800. Oh my god. 500. Jeez. Okay, so now he's just testing me. God darn it, man. So 1630 at 1800. 1800. False alarm. Also, we just wasted. All right, Betty White, Betty White, Golden Girls, thank you for being a friend. Going up and down and back again. Armed robbery. Crime progress. Uh, 
Three more men attempt to run a pawn shop. The security system is too much for them. The doors are all locked, and they're trapped inside. They're threatening to kill the owner unless they're immediately released. Huh. Several hospital patients complained they lost valuables and money. Uh, I didn't see anything. Uh, Bank of Freeburg. Thank you. Thank you. A van approached the bank just as it was closing. Three mass men jumped out quickly, opened the door, disappeared inside. Witness Betty Davis immediately called the police. She had Betty Davis eyes. Okay. She thought the criminals might be armed, but she wasn't sure. Kodu. Fox man and ho. Plus Pablo Vina. Go on. There's a couple elderly men sitting on a bench in the park playing strip poker. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, shit, I got a straight flush. Oh, speak it up. My sciatica and my colon are blowing up. Okay. Called in a file point. I've never, I've never seen anything more disgusting in my life," said one Kathleen Bethune. So who do we send? Donut Hunter, Betty White, and Shanow. Shanow, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. Fender Skate. Fender Skate. Bye bye. Officer, I'm saying. Yes. Whoa! Like we there we go. One man victoriously jumps to his feet, throws his card down on the bench, turns his bare ass toward the brake guard, and shouts, "Hi, I won!" Uh. Grab the suspect's clothing and run. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we got it. <we> got... <laughs> Betty White. You're such a ragamuffin. You are such a prankster, Betty White. Alright, Crombie. Ask her. There. Go on. Don't get killed, everybody. Half one, storm in the castle. Alright, so it looks like we're okay, homicide. No new frames found. Jesus, man, really? We got everybody on this case. I don't know what to do. Two, he was in shock. See investigations. And we got everybody on here. Detectives. We have no more detectives, but everybody's on this case. <clears throat> and we caught the offender. Yay! And the mafia just took over the day. Hooray! 
Betty White, I want you to come in tomorrow, man. Successful assignment seven. Wait a minute. I've had Betty White for a while and I didn't even know? Isn't that something? All right, end the day. See what we can do. Oh, cutscene finally. Boyd. I don't have much time, so uh, listen close. We got him, Jack. The dentist is in our custody. Finally. Wow. Congratulations, Ethan. Well, to be honest, uh, I'm not sure if it's our guy. But she's definitely the one who committed the murders in Freeburg. And it's a young woman. Wait a second, did yeah, you? A very large, very strong woman. I... What? Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jack. I gotta go. Uh, we've got a briefing. But, um, something's not right, Jack. Someone's leading us around by the nose. And we'll talk later, okay? I'd almost forgotten the feeling. The feeling you get when you stay on the sidelines during a major bust. But I don't think I'll be out of the game for long. Palmer had nothing to do with this. The dentist, whoever he is, was a gift box meant for me. It just got delivered to the wrong address. And I've got a hunch who packed the box. Who is that? Think it's Sand? Or you think it was Vargas? Vargas survived? Segregation, segregation is teacher promoted to Dean. Ooh, that won't be right. Street racers staged accident in Center City. Dressed in blood film banned in local theaters for excessive cruelty. Cruelty. Oh, wait, what, what was our little saying? Chain is only as strong as his weakest link. All right. My weakest link? I don't know. I killed him. Percy. Yeah, a box of Caesars. Is that a... Who is this With Vargas? that outfit, I could see you coming a mile away, Mr. Boyd. Chaffee. Ah, Mr. Chaffee. Knowing your love of theatrics, I was afraid you'd keep the mystery surrounding the dentist going for at least another day or two. <laughs> what could you mean, Mr. Boyd? Well, it's true. That's right, he's Robespierre, Robespierre does have a passion for mystery and the dramatic. But there's no need to confuse the actor with his character. For you, I'll play the hurried businessman who likes to cut to the chase. That's not quite me either, but though this mask I wear is quite a burden, I have long grown used to it. Besides, I don't want to distract you from your 180-day quest, not for a second longer than necessary. My, is half your time already up? You don't know how to count. I got 100 days. It was just 80. And you're taking out a prime cigar smoking time. I just wish to let you know that. You simply cannot imagine, Mr. Boyd, the painstaking work I've done to cultivate this maniac image. I turn to such literature the likes of which I wish I never knew. If our law enforcement agencies possessed even the slightest aesthetic sense, they would have instantly seen the game for what it was. And the postcards. What can I say? And if the real dentist turned up again at the wrong moment? I don't imagine lunatics take kindly to imposters. The dentist died of a heart attack last spring while he was sunbathing on the beach. I discovered this quite by accident. From a university friend, a therapist. It was he who convinced the dentist to stop killing, by the way. Why the murders? Obviously they'd all been raped by Rogers. It would have been much easier to just get them to talk. Mr. Boyd, the last thing I want is to appear a brutish butcher. I spent enough time on these women to know they were no use to me alive. Not sure if I should be ashamed to say it, but Stuart Rogers far surpasses me in his ability to intimidate people. Apparently such things only come with experience. But murder? For that I truly do feel ashamed. It's a burden I shall have to bear for the rest of my days. But sadly, it's not my greatest shame. What could be more shameful? To frame an innocent woman for such terrible crimes? What? Are you unhappy with a woman cast as the serial killer? Firstly, I'd say Dear Jordan adds a certain grace to the whole sordid story. And second, of all the people I hold in my debt, she's the strongest. 
and not just physically. Third, she had good reason to settle her debt with me as quickly as possible. Without going into details, I'll just say that she's a very, very caring mother. Do these taste good? Had we met earlier, Mr. Boyd, I would have shown you a far more refined pleasure. One without such an unpleasant smell. Okay. I'm afraid to even Heroin? imagine what you count as <laughs> pleasures, Mr. Chaffee. Fountains of blood in the city square? Mr. Boyd, you're not listening to me at all. I didn't take any enjoyment from the killings. Everything I've done was of strict necessity. I couldn't make Jordan kill all the women that Rogers raped. That would have been excessive. If I had made her kill them all, you'd be rather upset, no? I can't say I fully understand your plan, Mr. Chaffee, but you've given me more than enough reasons to arrest you. Yes, but allow me to counter them with one good reason not to. All the pills you can pop, Mr. Boyd. I think you mentioned you dined here once? Yes, not the best restaurant in town. And maybe you're just not familiar with the full range of our services. It's meat. It's human meat, Mr. Boyd. You're eating human meat. That was cow. <laughs> When I inherited this tasteless place from my father, I knew I could never make it into an exquisite restaurant. Instead, I accentuated the atrocity of it all, an aesthetic of a different kind. Now I even live here. To me, this complex is like a microcosm of Freeburg. <laughs> uh, but we're not here to talk about that. At school, I read a French novel whose name doesn't need mentioning, and I read many amazing things. It seems that in Paris, just before the Revolution, certain places were quite popular. People of wealth and taste visited from the city, shed their luxurious coats, peeled off their white gloves, and with the help of the local farmer, they brutally stabbed a hole in a bull and decorated themselves with the splattering blood as they prepared a large piece of meat for the fire. In the bull's suffering, these effeminate aristocrats found a perverse sort of pleasure. Now I make these pleasures available to the people of Freeburg. I will be honest with you. People who pursue such cruelty truly are crazy. But what is interesting... The best steaks are cut from the tender meat of young bulls. Eleven months is just right. Beautiful, healthy, full of strength. But these wealthy degenerates who pay $7,000 so our experts will show them where to plunge the blade for maximum effect. Even they don't have the spirit to slaughter the young bull. The thought never enters their minds. They look into the eyes of the healthy animal bursting with energy and they quickly shuffle past. As if by instinct, they are drawn to the old, weary, fading bulls. And then, with terrible smiles on their faces, they chew through tough steaks that taste of burning rubber. They feel that they're doing something real with their own hands, a sort of natural selection, as if they're agents in the natural process. But nature also teaches us that the old beast unable to fend off any threat, might yet survive if it cowers in a dark corner and pretends it doesn't exist. Then, perhaps, the young predator will pass. Mr. Scott will drive you back. I'm late for an appointment. Oh, boy. You're calling me the old bull and you're going to try to kill me, huh? Why? Shoot him. Just shoot him. Mr. Boyd, you won't believe it, but the person I just got off the phone with was talking about you. Seems like I'm pretty popular these days. By the way, Mr. Boyd, I've got to ask, why half a million? 
Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Well, that was interesting. Okay, so... Mm. All right, good morning. Mr. Blood, a maniac terrorized the city for two weeks, and you did nothing. What would have happened to Freeburg if federal agents had come to, hadn't come to the rescue and arrested the dentist? The situation was under control. We've been doing their work behind the scenes. The feds are just here to sip off the cream. The city... Excuse me. The city overflowed with panic after the press, your press conference about the dentist. Why didn't you think more carefully about what you were going to say? I stated, I stated the facts. I'm not a journalist and I don't get paid to distort reality. You were fake news, CNN. Fake news. After such a failure, any self-respecting officer, office holder would resign. What are your plans? I have a duty to the people of the city and I will not betray their trust. Now go fuck yourself, Troy Star. How do you comment on rumors about the relationship between Mayor Rogers and all five of the Dennis Freeberg victims? Before the law, we are all equal, even Mayor Rogers. We have to check this information. Thank you. Uh-oh. I just made enemies with Mayor Rogers. Freeberg boxers, boxers caught in doping scandal. Convicted serial killer Albert Ramirez, Sioux City. Famous DJ plays roof of Atticus Tower. Woohoo! Whoop. Uh, and yep, City Hall just went. Blah, blah. I don't care. I got Mr. Sand still. We'll be okay. Yes. 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 No, Hoyd. Yes. Damn it. Well, we're screwed. We got nobody today. Chopin, Hush Money, Emmanuel Power. Hush Money. That's perfect for me. Hush, hush. Shut your jaw. Oh, Dennis behind bars. Great job. Oh, ho. Oh. I earn 10% more. I can hire one more detective. Ryan Casey. Hire for shift A. So we'll have six there. Shift B. Five. Shift A. I can hire another officer. Can't tell medicine. I'm sassy. Yeah, we're gonna have her. Wait, there's no. I'm the sassy comedic black woman. All right. Our share. Take everything. Screw you people. You can't even prick it past. Yes. We're going to send to the police academy. Got those. 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 Send you to a barbecue. Breaking and entering. Okay, hello. Hello, is this the police? Who else will we be? UPS? 
It's Dolores Park. Someone's in my house. I hear footsteps coming from downstairs. My husband is on a business trip and won't be home for another hour. Please come right now. I know it must be some terrorist who's going to rob and rape me. I've locked myself in my room, but a toy won't stop this beast to tear up my clothes. And take me like the woman I am. Oh. All right, easy, lady. No one wants to do that to you. You're 88 years old, and it's just your husband. Calm your... Calm your tits that are probably near your knees. Unlawful assembly. Hmm. A crowd is gathered on the steps of City Hall demanding that city officials legalize euthanasia. The protesters are chanting, My life, my death, my choice. City Hall employees report that people brought homemade signs and the po protest is proceeding peacefully. Well, let's go give them what they want. Go beat them. Come on, Betty White. Go beat them. Go beat them. Ah, we can't bring a spot. Now let's be skipping the third right to the floor. Bring it in her. Oh, what a surprise. I don't think he wants to succeed in naked either, lady. Suspicious individual. Librarian Rolando Boone reported that a young man came in looking for books on chemistry and monographs on explosive substances and publications on extremist topics. Many of the books he requested are prohibited. The guy looks scary. His eyes made my blood burn cold. Well, dude. See? Of course, we don't do this in America because we'll be profiling. Can't profile the crazy people. Did we grab them? Yeah. Get the hell out of here, protesters. Yeah, investigations. Come on, man. We gotta get something. Why is it taking so freaking long? I mean, for fuck's sake, people. Suspect sees the police and pulls a huge knife from his bag and rushes towards the librarian shouting, You called the pigs? Stop yelling. It's a library. <laughs> I'm just choosing the biggest joke answers. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Alright, what do we got? Oh, that's hush money still. It says, Watercolor Grays. Watercolor Grays. I think that had an OU in there, sir, so it's probably Canadian. Ugh, Canadian. Chief Boyd, I represent this interest of a private military corporation which is hoping to attract a significant investor investment from your city. We're preparing an investor presentation would like to demonstrate the inadequacy of police training in matters of public safety. Please understand this is just business. We can all win here. Give us a couple hours with your weakest and laziest guys, and my kids will look like gladiators next year. And I, I promise you, the company will remain in your debt. That sounds good to me. There. I hope you guys can win. You losers. Losers! Suspicious individual. Prisoner Amanda Bush, while she was on her way to church, encountered a group of incredibly strange teenagers. They were running around in weird costumes, fighting with sticks and talking like robots. Maybe these crazy kids escaped from a mental hospital. Then it comes them and sent them back. Really, lady, it's just. They're just. They're just doing LARP, okay? They're just doing LARP plays, like some. Crying out loud. There's the sands. Uh, station. Police station. We got nobody. Still get one more detective.
And then we got the one investigation. We got the oh the sands. gang thing. Look how crappy I am. Man. Son of a bitch. The members of the science fiction club were just having fun at the park for crying out loud. Plus, these guys are like machines. They walked all over us, but we learned a lot. 20 minutes with these guys better than a whole year at the academy. Mr. Cottrell said he was very pleased with our performance and he offered us free training at the training complex. What do you think? Yes, I do. 5,000 bucks. Alright. You two freaking losers go out there. Gladys Shell was enraged about some comment that her colleague Matthew Talu made, so he, she grabbed a stapler and began to beat him over the head with it. Ooh, that was Shell and yelled loudly and lashed out at the secretary. She's having a nervous breakdown. Please hurry, said the suspect's boss who phoned the incident in. Derek Fox. Betty White and Shay now. You're an all-star. Drug trafficking and an tip just came in. A large shipment of Colombian coffee is being unloaded. And they're shipping heroin inside the bags of Colombian coffee. There's only a few guards watching them unload the shipment, so police roll up. They might just give up without a fight. All right. Sending our best and our brightest. And Pavlina and SWAT. Get over there. Right. Fountains, robbery. Elderly Cornelia, Cornelia Davis called up in a fit of hysterics. Come over quick, I've been robbed. This little bastard stole the treasure. Alright, we're coming. We're coming, lady. Investigation has started. Martin Sands, Lieutenant in the Sand Mafia family, manages a network of bookies and enjoy pers enjoys personally collecting especially large stats, even when he has repeatedly been struck by the family boss not to meddle in such affairs. Martin Sand hates automobiles and travels everywhere on his favorite horse, Snow White. Really? You can never catch him? Martin Sand never leaves the house without a gun, but he rarely ever uses it. He prefers to beat debtors with a large whip and finishes his victims with a shank. Martin Sand wears cowboy boots and spurs. He thinks he's Wyatt fucking Earp. Chick Pritchett, a widower, lost a large sum of money in the races, had to be able to pay. He was alone in the suburbs. The neighbors heard the sounds of breaking glass and men yelling, Pay up or die! Alright, gotcha. I got it. I know. I know what's going on here. Looks like we have a situation Woman grabbed a second here. stapler in her hands. These staplers look like deadly weapons. Oh my god, that's one blood-soaked stapler. Solid. We knocked her out. Ba boom. That's right. Got four cops, Betty White, and kicking ass and taking names. Refuse. Just deal with it. You got SWAT. All right. Jesus. Mafia can sell that. Cornella Davis was quarreling with the mother of a little boy who climbed into the fountain and took out a few coins. I made that wish of you. Hey, I made that wish of your little bastard stole it. Jesus Christ, that's funny. Oh, okay, holy crap. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. We got two more things to go out, go out with. Oh, let's have a song to play us out. Take a Walk by Walter Flores. Alright, here we go. 
He always complained. A respectable sounding man with a sleepy voice called and complained that fireworks were being set off right in front of his house. Uh, they look like bombs, but they have huge bags filled with all sorts of firecrackers. So, you know, can you just come over here? Take care of this, please. Thank you very much. Patricia Buckler says 10 or so people came onto her farm with some strange equipment. They wandered around with their gear for a while, then stopped and began to dig a huge pit. Her husband didn't approve of people rummaging around on his property, but his attempt to investigate ended in a fight. The farmer was badly beaten. Holy jeez. Okay. Okay, send everybody. End the night. Send everybody. Holy crap. Watch, there's gonna be another freaking thing that just comes out. Now I'm gonna blow it. Now I'm gonna blow it. Poor guy got beaten up. What the hell? Starting assault. Okay, three new frames. Here's a gun, has a whip. Alright. Intimidated him there. There's the cowboy boots. He's a widower, so there's no woman involved. No new friend. Son of a bitch, dude. Really? Ugh. Well, that's not it. I don't know. Three drunk men on the street lighting fireworks, throwing them about. When they see the police, one of them pulls out a firework that looks a lot like dynamite and sets fire to the fuse. Aim at the man with the taser. Man throws explosive one of his friends, the wick burned halfway down. Head down on the ground, hold your head. Fender caught, one guy's dead. Gotta be dead. Really? Yeah, okay, he didn't die. I guess. I don't know. Didn't Didn't tell us who that was, huh? Alright, well. That's gonna be it. I guess we're gonna have maybe these guys will come back like monsters, man. Who knows? Good day, good day. All these guys are tired. It's Saturday. Sable Society demands increased benefit. Modern art gallery opens modern painting course. Bride suffers happiness heart attack at city registry office. I'm so happy. Okay. And that'll be it. Thanks for joining me. Get off my interlone.